Now here we're going to go over gradients and the gradient adjustment layer in Photoshop. We can start out on the toolbar where our gradient or G will get you that. Now in the options bar you have some options that are universal to gradients all throughout Photoshop. You're always going to have your gradient editor and then the way your gradient is drawn which here you have a linear gradient, radial, angle, reflected, diamond. You'll have the mode in which it's applied, which is a layer transparency mode, just like the ones that are in the layers palette. Your opacity, reversing the layer, as you can see, reverses it, dither, and transparency. And I'm just going to give you a quick overview of the different gradients you can draw using this tool. So I'm going to make a quick selection here. And then I'm going to fill it with a gradient. So the most basic one is a linear gradient, which draws 0 to 1 or your foreground to background color of just a simple linear gradient. Moving on to the radial, you can see that it draws out from the center in a circular pattern. Then there's angular, which goes around in a circle 360 degrees, but drawing and filling the gradient, the foreground and background color. Then there's reflected, which as you can see just mirrors the one gradient to the other side. Or the diamond, which draws from all four corners. So there you can see the different gradient types that you can draw. Now let's take a look at the gradient adjustment layer and then the gradient editor. The gradient adjustment layer is pretty powerful. I have one created here, but I'm just going to create a new one from scratch. So I'll just delete this one. And under our adjustment layers, one of our fill layers, gradient. And you can see the first dialog that pops up is the gradient. It has your style, your linear, radial, angle, reflected, diamond the angle that you're drawing it at, scale, reverse, dither, and align with layer. So let's select one that we could actually see. Let's just do a simple black and white one right now. And if you move the angle, you can see that the angle of the gradient in which it's drawn changes. The scale now, you can see, scales the gradient from either like could be thin and tight or really wide and broad. Reversing it kind of flips the gradient as you can see. Dithering it kind of does a fine dither on top of your gradient to sort of reduce some banding and align with layer. Also in your gradient fill menu is where you can move your gradient shift it around. Just click and drag. Now align with layer has to do with pixels that are on your layer and how the gradient is confined to the pixels that are on your layer or the actual space of your image. So if we look at an example of that, let's exit out of here, and I have a layer here that has um, just a circle, and I'm going to apply a gradient as a layer style. Now under our layer styles, and we'll get into this more layer, we'll click on our gradient overlay, and you can see that right away our gradient is on our circle. And everything that we've been talking about in all the gradients is here in the layer style as well. Now, clicking here, we can move the gradient around. We can change it to radial, reverse it, and you can see how that works. Now, the alignment layer, like I said, has to do with the pixels that are on the layer. So if we click off of this, you're going to see that our gradient is going to grow larger because now it is taking up the entire pixel space for your image and it's not just confined to the pixels on your layer, which is the circle. So if we go back to align with layer, it's going to switch back to the localized gradient on the pixels for the circle. So that's what align with layer does. Now some things in the gradient editor might look a little familiar, like setting up your preferences, 
and the preset manager, we have our presets here. So these are all the gradients that are loaded in from our preset manager. If we want new ones, we can click on our little triangle button here, and we can load in some different kinds here. We can reset them, we can replace them, um, we can load in different ones that are presets from Photoshop, and then there's custom ones that we've added in here, which is being displayed now. And we could change the display of this too. We could do large thumbnails, we could do small list, we could do large list, so on and so forth. So I'm going to stick with the small thumbnail. If we want, we could load and save them from here, and you could edit them. If you want to create a new one, which we'll show you how to do that in a second, you could just name it, add a new one. Your gradient type, which is solid, noise, and we'll show you the examples of that. The smoothness, and then the actual gradient itself with the color bars. Now on our color bar, or our gradient bar, we have our different colors, which are represented in these little squares with the arrows. Um, on the bottom, these identify our colors, and on the top, this identifies alpha. Alpha meaning the opacity, and then you can see when you click on these, the stops on the bottom will give you your color, your opacity, your location along the gradient bar. So by adding a new stop, go ahead and click, and it'll add it in a different location where you choose. So let's just create a simple four color gradient. And it's pretty straightforward. Click on the color that you want to edit, and then your color will bring up your color palette or your color picker. And you could select a color. Or you could go to your swatches and grab color. Let's just say you want some red. And then orange. Let's do some yellow to white. Now if you want to be specific about where you want the location, you could say I want this at um, I don't know, 75 and here I want the location to be 25 or something. And then we'll put one in the middle. We'll have this one at 50. And then maybe we'll just darken this guy a little bit. Add some saturation to it. Some brightness. And go from there. So say we like our gradient here. Uh, we'll call it orange haze or something. Type in the name, hit new. It shows up in our preset. Now just because it shows up in your preset does not mean that it is saved um, forever and ever. If you get a new version of Photoshop and you want to load these in, you're going to have to save out your gradients like we did here. I'm going to call these Dave's New, if I could type, and then save them. Because Photoshop will remember them in the program, but sometimes uh, things get corrupt, sometimes you need to load them in again, or whatever, and you might lose these. So it's always good to save them out when you create new ones, or every so often, save them out. But we could see on in our image here, this is the gradient that we, that we just made. And then we could go back to our gradient fill dialog box, where we could change this to radial, angle, reflected, diamond, and we're just going to keep it at uh, linear for now. And our scale, you can see as we move our scale, it becomes tighter. And our angle, again, moving it around will change the angle. Shift also constrains this to 15 degrees. And you go from there. Reversing reverses it, and I usually keep dither on. Now let's make another gradient that has alpha in it. Now alpha in the gradient editor is represented as opacity. And like I said before, opacity is controlled at the top part of the gradient bar. So I'm going to exit out of here for a second and go into my color fill layer underneath. Now I'm just going to change this to a color that we can um, 
obviously see the effects of our transparent gradient. So I just changed it to this obnoxious green color. Going back to the gradient. Now, at the top, let's click on our stop. And we can see here that the opacity is 100%. So I'm going to switch this to 0. So right away, since I don't have stops anywhere in between where my other stops are at, it's going from kind of 0 here, where the black is, the first color, and it starts becoming less opaque or transparent towards 1, or my white color on the end. Now, if we want to create different um, opacities along the way, let's create a stop and try to match these up here. I'm just going to create new ones here, and we're going to put them at the same location. But since all of these opacities are zero, you can see now what's happening is that only my first color is being displayed, the rest is invisible. So here, I'm going to change this to, let's say, uh, 25%. Here, I'll change this to kind of 50, and here, I'll change this to 75. And so you could see that we almost created another little gradient here of opacity. Now exiting out of here, let's remove our obnoxious color. Or actually, it changes to white so we can see the exact results of what's happening. Now let's talk about another example of gradients with opacity. I'm going to grab my red-green gradient, and I'm going to change the top opacity to zero. So looking at our gradient here, you can see that it's red, but as it's going towards the green, you can see that the green is still in there. So if you want to do a totally correct transparent gradient, you need to set this to the same color. Just pick red. So now you can see how that changed. It's no longer fading to the green, it's fading to the same color red and giving you a proper linear gradient. So another example of that, let's just try it here. I'm going to do blue. And you can see right when I added to the blue, as it's becoming transparent and going towards the red, you can see that you're getting a red tint in your gradient. And that's basically the opacity in the gradients. Now, the other part that we want to talk about is the gradient type. Now, we've primarily been working with solid gradients, which is the most common type of gradient that we use, um, but there's also a noise gradient. Now, a noise gradient allows you to sort of randomly choose colors between a range, and using different gradients here, these are all solid, but once we switch them to noise, you can see that a range comes in that has multiple amounts of colors. So the color model is RGB, or you could do HSB, or lab. And so you can get some different variations of gradients here, and there's different ways to work with them. There's the roughness, which is how intense the color is. So you could go really subtle, or you could go craziness. and you can sort of restrict your saturation. You could bring it up, or your brightness. And you could sort of design gradients this way. You could also restrict colors, so you're confining them to a certain range. So rather than the whole spectrum, you can crunch it down to just a certain range of colors. You could add transparency as well. Now when you add the transparency, you don't have the control that you do on the regular 
uh, sell it gradient. So it's one thing to be mindful of. And then there's randomize. So you can kind of just create random gradients on the fly. And it's just another type of gradient in Photoshop that you can use. And that's pretty much it for the gradients in Photoshop. Again, really powerful, real flexible, and they're pretty easy to use and they could just they add a lot to anything that you're working on as long as they're used properly.